Hello friends, this video on NEET in alternating current is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now see what is the power associated with an alternating circuit. Okay, so now for any AC circuit, now, okay, forget about the alternating uh, current. Just recall quickly, how do we calculate power? What is power? Power is nothing but work done per unit time. So that is how we define power, that is how we calculate power, right? So now in a very similar way, when it comes to alternating current circuit, that is AC circuit, here we say that average power is equal to VRMS IRMS into cos phi. And this term cos phi is known as the power factor. So how do we define power factor? We can say that power factor is equal to P average divided by V RMS into I RMS. So what is this V RMS multiplied by I RMS? This is nothing but the apparent power. So basically cos phi is equal to true power divided by apparent power. So that's how power factor is defined. A power factor plays a very critical role when we calculate power associated with an AC circuit. That's because in an alternate in, in an AC circuit, you might have different elements in the circuit. You might have resistors and or capacitors or inductors. And as we have seen that the phase relationship between voltage and current depends upon the elements present in the circuit. So basically phi which is the phase difference keeps changing depending upon the elements in the circuit. So cos phi plays a very critical role uh, in this case. Okay now let's see that how do we calculate power in different types of circuit. So let us first talk about a resistive circuit. Now what happens in a resistive circuit? So here the voltage and current they are in the same phase. That means phi is equal to zero. Therefore P average is equal to V RMS I RMS because cos zero is one. Okay now let's talk about a capacitive circuit. So what happens in a capacitive circuit? So here uh, the current C for capacitive C for current. So current leads voltage by 90 degrees. So the value of phi is 90 degree or pi by 2 and cos 90 degree is equal to 0. Therefore P average is equal to 0. So average power associated with the pure capacitive circuit is 0. In a similar way if you try to calculate it for an inductive circuit in that case also the phase difference is equal to pi by 2. The only difference is that in an inductive circuit the voltage leads current by pi by 2. But here also the average power is equal to 0. Now let us talk about little more complicated circuit. Let's say we talk about the LCR circuit where we have inductor, capacitor as well as resistor all connected in series. So in this case there is no specific value of phi but we calculate phi with this expression tan phi is equal to xl minus xc divided by r right now how do we define xl it is omega l minus 1 upon omega c divided by r okay now if tan phi is given now let's use little bit of trigonometry so tan theta is equal to perpendicular by base so what what is cos theta cos theta is base by hypotenuse and from the pythagoras theorem we know that hypoten hypotenuse is equal to root over p square plus b square so we can make use of this relationship to find out the power factor here. So cos phi will be equal to, so here this entire numerator is perpendicular and base is r. So cos phi would be base divided by root over p square that is omega l minus 1 by omega c whole square plus b square that is plus r square. So this would be the value of cos phi. So therefore in an LCR circuit, P average will be equal to V RMS I RMS into cos phi that is into R upon root over omega L minus 1 by omega C whole square plus R square. So this is how we would calculate P average in LCR circuit. Now let's think about some more circuits. Let's say that if you have a circuit only with capacitor and resistor, that is a CR circuit. In that case, what would be the value of tan phi? So basically you do not have XL because you do not have inductor. So tan phi will be equal to XC by R. Therefore, cos phi will be equal to R divided by root over 
r square plus x c square. So this is how we will calculate this. So p average will be equal to v RMS i RMS into r divided by root over r square plus a. instead of xc we can write 1 upon omega c. So 1 upon omega square c square. So in this fashion we can actually calculate the power associated with any alternating current circuit depending upon the elements which are present in the circuit. Now let's move ahead and discuss about one of the most important applications of alternating current and that is transformer. Now what is a transformer? So the transformer word is derived from the word transform that means to change. So here we will see that these devices they help to uh, transform the voltages, transform the current. So every transformer like if you look at the basic structure of a transformer they have a primary coil and a secondary coil. Now everything depends upon the number of turns in these two coils and these two coils are completely insulated from each other. The primary coil the primary coil is the input coil and the secondary coil is the output coil. So that, that's the convention that we follow. Now there are two types of transformers based upon the uh, you know construction. Now one set, one kind of transformer they have the number of turns on the primary coil. Let's say that the number of turns on the primary coil is NP and number of turns on the secondary coil is NS. So in type 1 transformer we see that the number of turns on the secondary coil is greater than the number of turns on the primary coil. In type 2 transformers, we see that the number of turns on the primary coil, so you see the red turns, is more than the number of turns on the secondary coil. Now what happens as the number of turns changes? So this happens. So in transformer, the voltage across these coils is directly proportional to the number of turns on these coils. So voltage across the secondary coil by voltage across the primary coil is equal to number of turns across the secondary coil by number of turns across the primary coil. So voltage is directly proportional to the number of turns but current is inversely proportional to the number of turns. So that is what is being very significantly expressed by this uh, e expression and, and that's the basic concept of a transformer. Now what happens? So in this type 1 transformer, since the number of turns on the secondary coil is more, so voltage across the secondary coil is more than the voltage across the primary coil. Current across the secondary coil is less than the current across the primary coil. So this type of transformer is known as the step up transformer. Why? Because in these type of transformers, the voltage is stepped up. That is, the voltage across the secondary coil is always more than the voltage across the primary coil. So voltage across the output coil is more. So you are stepping up, you are increasing the voltage. So this is a step up transformer. Whereas in type 2, exactly the reverse happens. So here the number of turns across the primary coil is more. So voltage across the primary coil is more, but current across the primary coil is less. So this type of transformer is known as a step down transformer. So that, that's all about transformer. A lot of times people get very much confused with complicated designs and constructions of transformers but this is the basics of working of a transformer. Now let's talk about the efficiency of a transformer. That's very very important that how efficient is the transformer to step up or to step down the voltage. Now if a transformer is 100% efficient, that means the value of efficiency should be equal to 1, which is practically not possible. So that is just the ideal scenario. But otherwise, this is how we calculate efficiency. So voltage multiplied by current across the secondary coil divided by voltage multiplied by current across the primary coil. So we are basically trying to compare the output with respect to the input. Now, if, as I said that uh, the ideal scenario of efficiency is equal to 1 is not possible. However, a very well designed transformer can be up to 95% efficient. Now, what do we mean by that efficiency? If a transformer is 100% efficient, that means there is no energy loss involved, which is not possible. Now, when I say that a transformer is 95% efficient, that means the remaining 5% is some energy which is lost as either heat or some other energy form. So that basically counts for the energy loss. 
Okay, so I think yes, that's pretty much about transformers. And with this, we have reached towards the end of recap of alternate currents. And we are now going to solve good number of multiple choice questions based on the concepts of alternating currents. Question number one, a filament. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.